Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to the Artist Corner. I am BB, how you guys doing? Oh, today, I am, I don't even have words, y'all know I'm always like emotional, but today I am interviewing someone that I have admired for most of my life that I can remember when I was a young girl, I used to hang out in the clubs and I loved her music. Listen, this woman, this icon has sung with the greats, been around the greats. She is just amazing. All you guys know her music. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Miss, Miss Melissa Morgan. Melissa Morgan. Welcome, 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 welcome to the oh, water. <laughs> Oh, yes, you looking beautiful, Blondie. I love it, love it, love it, love it, I love, love you. it. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm doing really, really good. Thank you. How let me ask you something. Um, how do you pronounce your name? Because I've been watching interviews. They say Melissa. It's Melissa. Yeah, it's like Lisa with M-E. Ma yes, that's beautiful. That's yeah. Uh, too. Melissa yeah. So I met you and I was taken away. Uh, you know, to me, the icon is always, uh, it's always amazing. You know, um, it's always amazing to meet an icon and um, someone dare call me now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't be calling me too. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. So, so who those do not know, you, if you under a rock, Melissa is, uh, she is the creator of Do Me Baby and Fool's Paradise. And you know what people don't talk about as much? And it's my favorite, favorite song. Do You Still Love Me? That is my jam. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. That's yeah. a good one. So let's take it back before we get into all of that. You have been singing, singing in the choir, all this stuff. When did it start for you? First of all, where are you from? Oh my God, I'm from uh, uh, New York, Queens, yeah. New York, Corona, New York, actually. And and it it really started for me, you know, there in my mom's living room with my sister. And uh, we would sing the Supremes and uh, Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight and all that stuff. And uh, uh, one day my mom says, okay, you know, because she, she likes to sing, but I'm the singer. <laughs> He says, okay, well, you girls, you put together a routine and you do it for the family. And if you do really, really good, I'm going to take you to amateur night at the Apollo. So me and my sister, yeah, we put this little routine together with uh, Aretha Franklin. And we was dressed up in my mom's clothes. I'm like nine years old. And 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 we did really, really good. And uh, she never took us to the Apollo, but I got there later anyway. But, I know, that's right. You know, I know. Him, but, uh, that, that's how it started, doing it for the family. Okay, okay. And you, so you started doing it for the family. When did you, I want to say, when did you first know that this is what you want to do? Like, it hit you. Uh, well, it, well, it kind of hit me. I, I was in a gospel choir okay. called the Starlets of Corona. And uh, I was like one of the lead singers. I, I used to sing a song called, I Must Hang Up. <laughs> I used to sing a song called, I Must Tell Jesus. And um, I used to cry when I sang that song. And it, it, it became like a showstopper for the choir. Wow. But this, you know, 19 year old girl singing you know, she starts crying, you know, there's, oh, she got the spirit, oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it just, um, it warmed my soul when I sang. Even when I sang behind, you know, the other singers in the group, it just warmed my soul. Every time I sang, I felt like I was just, like, releasing all this, this energy, you know? Yeah. But it's like, where's this energy coming from? And how am, how am I able to sing like this? Like, you know, God's gift, you just don't never know. You just have to just go with it. So um, that's what I kind of knew. After the choir broke up, I still wanted to sing. Okay. And uh, so then I wound up doing talent shows in school and, and trying to form groups with, you know, my friends and stuff and doing backyard parties, trying to invite the neighborhood so I could sing. And, it, it just, you know, it's like I just had to sing. 
And so uh, my dad just said, you know, we, we're just gonna find some things for you to do. And uh, we, we looked around and we, we found the group that was looking for a singer. And I went and auditioned and I got it. And, and then the rest is just like history. That was business before pleasure. And then I went on to, you know, do my own thing and sing with Shaka and Kashif and open up with Gladys Knight and all those wonderful things. Yeah. Oh my goodness. When I was in my 20s, me and my friends, we all worked in lower Manhattan. We loved to go to, I think it was Leviticus, and it was another, ah, I can't remember the name of the other club. And you perform Kashif, we always see Kashif. And we were just, we, we were just like groupies a little bit, you know, like we just followed around, like, where are they gonna be, where are they gonna be? But that was a highlight for us growing up. That was a, you know, we were we were young adults, but that was like, oh is that I, I miss, I miss places like that, Leviticus. Yeah. I even miss, you know, uh, when, uh, sweet waters. Oh my go, god! I used to live across the street from Sweet Waters when Doobie Baby came out. I I placed right across the street from Sweet Waters from the high rise. It was wonderful. Fifteen hundred dollars back then. I mean now it's like three four thousand dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars, you know, for a uh, uh, one bedroom. And you know you're living in the city, so you are high. Like yeah. I made it. I made it. Yes. I, Run over to Sweet Waters all the time, and Whitney would be there. Oh God, it's just such memory. Uh, um, I, then I know you know the cellar. Yes, yes, definitely I know, know the cellar. Yeah. Remember Mikel under the stairs? I sang under the stairs. stairs. That's oh, right. God. Yep, I remember that. Wow. I sang it all. All those places were like um, school for me. Mm -hmm. You know, because I basically just, I went to school just to graduate, but mm -hmm. I, I really learned and honed my skills going to the club, you know, and I, I was young because I graduated high school at 16. Wow. So, you know, I wasn't even drinking and stuff, but they would let me sing at the club as long as, you know, I didn't drink. So I, 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 I was in the group with Johnny Kemp. You know, so I, I think, come on now, girl. That's where I started for all these wonderful people. I, I met Patti LaBelle, actually. I used to sing Patti LaBelle's If Only You Knew and all that stuff. And her hairdresser used to come to the cellar. And her name was Norma. And, and Norma said, I'm bringing Patti LaBelle here to hear you, Melissa, for my birthday. Because she said, well, wherever I want to go for my birthday, she would go. And she brought Patti LaBelle to come hear me sing. And I have a picture of me and Patti LaBelle when I'm like 16 years old, 17 years old, singing at the cellar. And me, it, and she took me under her wings. I've been her baby girl ever since. You know, oh my goodness. a couple of years went over to Europe and toured with her and the Whispers. And so these relationships, Shaka Khan came to see me. That's how I got to sing background with Shaka Khan, Vesta, you know, so um, it's just wonderful to have a platform to 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 hone your skills. That's like the hottest place, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so th those were the hottest places in Manhattan. And everybody came to Izzy Brothers. They all used to come there because that's where they could come, sing a little bit. Or if they didn't want to sing, they could have a drink and have all their family there, birthday parties and stuff. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Oh, I wish we had that now. It was wonderful. It, it was yes. wonderful. The, the the pieces that I saw growing up, just to see all of these creative people, amazing people just come together and it just worked. You know, you work with so many people, Whitney. You. Yes. I love you and Shaka Khan had a you had y'all had a unique relationship, and I heard you speak about her before. She's one of your um, someone you admired. Yeah, that's Thank my her. idol. That that's my that's my girl right there. She she it, it, it was so funny. Uh, when I got the gig, I was singing at the cellar. Vesta came to see me, and mm -hmm. Vesta was leaving to go and sing with the Isley, uh, not the Isley Brothers, um, the Commodores. And she says, girl, I'm leaving to go sit with Commodore's because I can make more money singles. <laughs> okay. She said, but Shaka was like, I don't care where you go. You just better find somebody to replace you. And she came to the cell and said, girl, you gonna replace me. I was like, really? And so um, the musical director for Shaka called me, her name is Lissette Wilson, who wind up, uh, Lissette, that story. We mm -hmm. want a uh, uh, recording and writing do You Still Love Me in Fool's Paradise. She was my songwriter that I wrote with. But anyway, she was musical director with 
Shaka Khan. And uh, she called me up and she says, hey, this is Lisette Wilson. And we're looking for, you know, Melissa Morgan. I was like, this is Melissa Morgan. And she said, uh, um, uh, uh, Shaka wants you to sing background for her. So we need you to come and uh, audition. And I hung up on her. Are you there? Where you at? Yeah, right here. What? <laughs> okay, okay, I didn't see. You. Okay, that's <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, to you. Okay, so and I hung up on. So and she called me back and she said, "Girl, if you hang up on me again, I'm coming to your house and I'm fighting you because I live in Queens." I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> oh my goodness. So she said, "Really, this is serious, you know." So she told me where to meet, and 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 I had to sit in the lobby, and it was actually me and Johnny Kip sitting in the lobby because I was scared, you know, I'm just 17, I don't know what what was going on. So I sit in the lobby, and wait, here comes Shaka with that hair, and oh my gosh, she just whisked into this building, and she looked, and she says, "Who are you?" <laughs> and I said, "I'm Elisa Morgan. I'm the one that's supposed to sing background oh boy. She said, "Well, can you sing?" And I said, well, if I couldn't sing, I wouldn't be here. And she said, that's what I'm talking about, bitch. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my and God. I've, I've been bitch ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I could see her saying that. I've never seen her before. But I said, well, Lisa Martin, hey, bitch, where you been? She just like that. Because I'm bitch. <laughs> And then I knew you blew her away. You just blew her away, and that yeah, was it. Forget I it. All stuff and she was so happy. I designed clothes for her and everything during that tour. We did the Ain't Nobody tour. It was wonderful. She was such a sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. I love her. And then one night she got hoarse. She said, Girl, I'm hoarse. I can't sing this high note. So you stand back there. You hit the note because I know you can hit it. And then I'm just going to go like that. And she did. I hit the note. And the audience didn't know no difference. She was like, hit it every night. <laughs> Wow. Oh man. That is a that is amazing. She trusted, she trusted me here. Yeah, she trusted you. How was Whitney? How was it to meet Whitney? Oh my gosh. Well, first time I because she is the reason why I met Whitney. Because they he did uh You Give Good Love and he did a song on her album called I Keep Thinking About You, Baby. So tell me what you're gonna do. Got me thinking about you, you, me. All I wanna do is. Ooh. Yeah. So um, uh, she comes in the studio. He calls me up because I was his go to background singer. Okay. And I, and I sang on all his stuff. And he says, I got this project. And I want you to meet Sissy Houston's daughter. And I knew Sissy Houston. And I, you know, we'd heard about Whitney, you know, in the industry. She's doing an album. We're doing two songs. I want you to, you know, sing on this song. And I said, okay. And uh, so we sitting in the studio waiting. And uh, you mean they had the, the, the bigger kind of cell phones. Remember those big cell phones? Oh, I do. I remember them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney, she's, I mean, she's, she's like the size zero. You know what I'm saying? She's so cute. And she got this big old phone and, and her and Robin come walking in. And she's like, Mom, if you have those church people call my number one more time, I'm changing my number. And I mean it, Mama, you ain't going to be able to reach me either. And so I'm sitting there, I'm going, I turn to Kashif, I said, she not talking to Sissy Houston like that, is she? Wow. <laughs> and I was like, yes. I said, she said, yes, I am. And I mean it, mom. And I got to go. I got a session. And blah, 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 you know. And so that's how I met her. And she was, and, you know, they was like, this is Whitney. And she's like, hey, girl, how you doing? You know, and I was like, wow, you talk to your mom? I said, my mom would have me. Oh, my God. You know, but I didn't even know, because if you see the movie now. Yes. I didn't know that. If you see the movie now, she wasn't living with her mom. I just saw the movie. Without it, it started living with Robin. Yeah, so when I saw absolutely. the movie. I was like, that's why she was like that because she wasn't living there. So she didn't have that attention. Like, oh my God, I got to be good because I got to go back home and face mom. She right. didn't have to face mom because she was already living with Robin. I was like, oh my God, I didn't know that. 
she was on her own young she was on her own already yeah the movie was true to what you know because i don't know about the movies but But we became really good friends uh uh, and it's so funny one time uh, we was at the grammys and it was at radio city Mm -hmm. and she was up for you know all the grammys and you know i was backstage you know because i've always been a, a recording member and you know, I went to the Grammys with Freddie, and he was nominated. So you know, we were backstage, and she came backstage, and she saw me, and I was like, "Oh, girl, how you doing? Congratulations!" She's like, "Oh, hey, Melissa, blah blah blah." And you know, she, what she did, it was just the wildest thing. She turned around and looked because Michael Jackson was standing like right next to her, and she turned to me. She says, "Melissa, do you know Michael?" And I said, "No, I don't know." She says, "Michael, this is my dear friend, Melissa Morgan." Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. And you know, you're the first one I told that to because I always say, I meant to say, to say that that's how she was, you know? And she was like, This is my dear friend, Melissa. And Michael came up and hugged me. How you doing, Melissa? Oh my God. Jeez. I was like, hey, You didn't just do that to me. And she said, Yes, girl, you gotta meet these people. <laughs> and you, oh my God, I don't know. I probably would have been like, Oh, oh my God. I, I just was like, you know, for him to come and look me straight in my eye and say hi, because she said, you know what I'm saying? Because oh anybody else, he was about to even, you know, but he came over and shook my hand. And it's like, wow, Whitney did that. And she's just been like that. She was, I went to her and Bobby's wedding. And, you know, I just died when, you know, she, she passed away. I was I was driving and they called and said, pull over, pull over, because we know you're going to go crazy. You know, I went to the funeral and I just hung out with her family you know, to a private screening to see the movie. Wow, okay. And listen to this. I'm going to Los Angeles uh, the day after tomorrow for Grammy week, and they're turning the W Hotel into the WH Hotel, the Whitney Houston Hotel, for the movie and everything. And they invite every single event. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's well, wonderful having friends. Yeah. Right? You, you, your, your personality, like you <laughs> just call people in. You have had amazing career. You know, um, let me ask you this, because I like to ask things that I don't hear. What, what song did you so enjoy out of all your songs that you just love to record it and it was just like one of your favorites? Um, there is a song called I Love No More With You. Okay. And I'm like, I love no more with you. And I like singing that song because most people are like, you know, oh, it's over, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm done with you, you know, uh, I've moved on. But, but this song was, was like such a touching thing because she still loved him, you know, but they, they, they couldn't be together no more. So it was, instead of saying, you know, well, it's over and I'm leaving you and blah, blah, blah. It, and it was just like the one of the lyrics go, we can't go on sharing the same bed without knowing what's in each other's head. Ooh. <laughs> now, man, that kind of stuff. So it's like, I love no more with you. You know, so I, I, I like recording and, and writing and singing that song. Yeah. Yeah, you love, you write so much beautiful love songs. So when we met and you asked me about, I got to bring this up because it was just, just crazy. So when you asked me about, um, you asked me about, um, what was that song? You asked, wait a minute. Oh, Fool's Paradise. No, no, no. Oh yeah, it was Fool's Paradise. I'm Paradise, yeah. yeah. Do me, baby. So you asked me, what was Fool's Paradise about? I'm like, in love. And, I was just, and you just broke it. <laughs> Because I said, everybody, I don't know why they think that's like a love song. It, it, it is a love song, but it's a, it's a, it's a conversation song between a parent and their, and, and their, uh, their sibling, it's between a parent and, and their, their son or their daughter. Because I was telling you, I had moved out, right? And, and I was with Lisette. I moved because she had a house in Jamaica and I moved in with her because we were recording. She would record uh, during the day, you know, the music. And then at night, I would be going and record the melody and, and, and the lyrics and, and, and sing it. And that's how the studio was. And one day my dad called me and, and said something, you know, and I was like, I did, man, get her. And he was like, 
girl. <laughs> you know, all right, you, you better check yourself. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't in no fool's paradise. I was like, ah, fool's paradise. You know, because everybody thinks that I got it from Shaka's fool's paradise because I loved her so much. I did, but my dad was like, you know, just because you don't live here, I'm still your dad. You know what I'm saying? I'll come over here and, and you know what I'm saying, and get you. So it, it's it's a song about a, 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 a parent telling their their child, go on, go on out in the world, live your life. You know what I'm saying? But don't get too crazy and don't get too fast. And uh, it, it, if it gets crazy out there, just know I'll be here waiting for you when you come off your trip. You know, like, trip. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, I'm a star now, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And my dad was like, uh-uh. So, that's what it's about. It's like it's a parent saying, "Go out there, but be careful of that fool's paradise." And if things get too crazy, I'll be here waiting for you when you come off your trip. See, and I knew, right, I knew that because I remember that in the lyrics. I knew, but I just, I guess, when an artist writes a song, you take it as you get what you get from it. So for me, like sometimes being in relationships, and you feel yes, fool yourself and whatever. Uh -huh. That's what I took from it. Um, I love. It. Song, and but I, it's and, a and, whole new meaning, like you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. And everybody loves that song. It is like a national anthem in London, wow. and the UK, and stuff. They just love it. It's 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 really wonderful. I, and I tell you, LL Cool J has covered it. Oh my God, Jay Z. Mary and Jay Z. Uh, it was it was part of the theme song for Love and Hip Hop Miami. It's just uh, it has a life of its own, Cha Ching. <laughs> yeah, it does. Your music, I has I have to say, your music is ageless because your music from my time, and I, I have so many young people around me. I could play your songs, and they, you know, they get it and they love. Yeah. It. You know that. Yeah. They call me sometimes like a little culture keeper, you know. I try to keep the culture going with kids. Like you, people won't believe you. Know, I have kids that don't know a lot of Michael Jackson stuff because that's the generation. So I introduce them to new things, you know. So like right. when I get back to work, oh, they'll probably be making up a dance up. They gonna want to make up a dance up a do me baby because that's the way these kids are now. Yes, <laughs> oh, that's what they want. Yes, a do me baby now is is that's like a uh that's like a slap on the wrist compared to what cardi b and all of them <laughs> yes it's true it's so true but i always have to keep in mind like yes. nothing i mean that, back then it was like oh my god a girl singing do me baby oh no sensual and everything but we kept it like really classic could you imagine me singing do me baby now i probably almost have to be half naked I mean, I mean when i see cardi b and the butt out and, and megan the stallion it's like child we we couldn't do that we couldn't do that I, 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 Y'all have gone too far. <laughs> and so working with young people, me yeah. as an adult, it's it's hard to balance that. So my job is the balance. No, you can't do that stuff. You 14. You 14 and no, you won't, you can't do that. So it's a balance, but also giving them, letting them be free and be creative also. It's, it's yes, yes. I, I, I just think, I mean, if you ask me about the music to some of the music is good, but 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 some of the class is gone. You know what I'm saying? Some of the class, if they can bring back some of the class and not be so so raunchy and, and find that balance, especially for the kids. You know, I I, I think we'd be in a better place of sit of of our kids getting it and and being better and excelling rather than you know wanting to keep up with. What, like I said, what Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, all of them, and they're wonderful, you know, because that's them. But it's it's not reality, right? It's just not reality. You just can't go around twerking with your butt out, you know what I'm saying, at every party and everything, and think, you know, that's going to make me popular. You just you, right. you can't do that. Yeah. Do you think that, um, being that you've been in the industry for so long, do you think that? as a female because even on the level that I'm on it's sometimes being a female is difficult do you think that they are pressured into that do you think that the yeah. industry is listen to this I love her dearly 
and and, and we know that she has a, a following of of a hundred million plus. How do you not think it's pressure when Beyonce just got twenty four million dollars for an hour to sing somewhere? Don't you think that every singer that's that's twelve? Yeah. 14, 15, 16 that understand that says, that's going to be me. And it's not. It's not. I, I was just talking to my fiance in, in the car and, and, and he was saying, you know, you know, Beyonce can make that anytime. No, not even she can make it anytime. That was that was a very special thing of a of a hotel opening and 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 a billion dollar guy say, saying, I want Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? But that's not going to happen to every every singer that's 14, 15, 16 years old. You know what I'm saying? But that's what they're thinking. If, if, if I just be like Beyonce and everything, then I'm going to make it. And this industry is not like that. It takes a lot of work to get to where she is, you know, to make that kind of money. It takes a lot of work. A lot of behind the scenes. If you could give like advice to to young artists, as far as the industry and coming up, what what advice would you give to them? What I would give is let your path be your path. You can always admire and and, and want to be like and, and get inspired by what somebody else is doing, but the journey that God has for you is not the journey that he is not the same as what was for them. So even though you love a Beyonce and you admire, like I love Shaka Khan a lot, of, I, I admire her. I know that my journey as an artist and as a singer was not the same journey as Shaka Khan. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I had to find, you got to find your own niche. You know, you got to find what works for you. I had to find what works for Melissa and, and not try to be, you know, Oh, everything that Shaka does, I want to do. And this is a, no, you got to find what works for you and be happy with it. Yeah. If it's meant for you to have what they have and, and excel or whatever, you're going to see that happen. But don't go in thinking, like I'm saying, don't go in thinking because you read like, oh, my first gig is going to be $24 million. Mm -hmm. it, it, it ain't going to happen like that. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes. That's so true. Yes. Um, let me ask you this. So now all of that, because you, you, you was Miss Diva. What's going on now? What are you doing? What can we expect to hear from you? What is going on with you now? Oh my goodness! I have a movie coming out, okay. uh, and and I have a new song out called "Footprints of an Angel" that's on my own label, uh, Asylum Productions, and we released it last year, and it was uh, one of the most successful. Uh, independent songs of 2022 and the song is called footprints of an angel you can go on streaming and see it it has over like 500 uh hits on uh youtube between my channel and vivo we're so excited about that and we're hoping he comes out in march and i play the mother oh nice yeah, the mother of, of a young lady that went out the streets doing the wrong thing got pregnant and we couldn't tell her nothing, you know, fool's paradise. Fool's paradise, right. <laughs> but I'll be here waiting for you when you come That's home. That's right, right. Comes home, and, you know, I have a granddaughter, and I'm so happy, uh -huh. and everything like that. And then we find out she has cancer. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. And, and she dies, and I have to sing at my own daughter's funeral. And that's what Footprints of an Angel my new single is about, you know what I'm saying? I uh, knowing that, you know, even though they're gone, they're still walking and talking and, and being there with you. Oh man, I can't wait till that comes out. I'm oh. excited too, yeah. Yes. You know, that's the thing, independent movie, so. Yeah, and it's the thing when you, so now you have, from my understanding, you have your own label? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. and I have my own, and that's, I, I would tell young people now, don't be afraid to put your, your stuff out there. It costs a little bit, you know, but the internet has made it so, so um, accessible for you to have your own song out there on uh, DistroKid and on um, YouTube and Bebo and, and Spotify and all of that. And you can make money releasing your own stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then I got one more, one more else to say. Uh, uh, be patient because when I released Do Me Baby, it was wonderful. We were on a high 
and then then I left my management company and, and went somewhere else and, and then uh, what's that what's that called sound scan came out mm -hmm. and then started sound scanning rather than the record company telling them how many copies were sold mm -hmm. and I waited and waited and waited because I knew that Doobie Baby was gold and I never got my gold record and then just like a month ago they told me that Doobie Baby has officially sold over 1 million copies in the U.S. So I'm going to get my gold and platinum um, uh, album of, of, what is it, certified award real soon. So, oh, and that's been 25 years, 25 wow. years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, though. Yeah, but you got to be patient and you got to be happy. Enjoy, yeah. you know, enjoy your life. Travel, enjoy yourself. Don't get so swooped up in this industry that you don't have another life. Yeah. Because it'll eat you up, right? It'll eat you up and spit you out. No, a competition, it'll eat you up because you'll see somebody doing, oh God, why ain't I doing that? Oh God, why ain't that happening to me? Oh God, you know, enjoy your life and let things come as they're supposed to. I believe in that 100% how I met you because even everything is competitive. Even, you know, I do videos. I, you know, I do, you know, podcasts. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I should be doing this. Oh, should I? But you know what? I'm coming to the point. I know my lane. I'm in my lane. I like my lane. And God is sending me all these gifts like yourself. Yes. I'm in my I'm, lane and I, I'm, I'm loving happy. my lane. I'm happy. I have a place in, in, in Aruba that I go to that I just unwind. And people are like, oh my God, Aruba, I want to go to Aruba. I'm like, I've owned a place in Aruba over 20 years because I have to go somewhere and just unwind. You know, and, and, and like forget about it. And remember that there's a person underneath all of this stuff. There's a person that needs love and comfort and understanding. And, you know what I'm saying? And peace and quiet and tranquility. You know, it's not always about the go, go, go. Oh, let me get to this gig. Let me do this gig. Let me do that. No, there's a person under here that needs nurturing. So do that. So. Yeah, I, I get that, and I'm gonna take that because that that is so important. Because I'm one that go 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 go, but I do do the tranquil. But I, I do go sometimes a lot. You know, I get, yeah. it. I get it. I went to Dubai this year. It's going to be the next entertainment uh, fabulous place to go in the next five years. It's going to overtake basically everything. It's so oh. fabulous there. You know, um, it's going to overtake. Jamaica, there's a, everybody's gonna want to go to Dubai because they're setting it up that way. But it's going to be a rich man's place. Yes, yeah. it's just expensive. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I, I get, a lot of my friends have went to Dubai and they're like, mm -hmm, it's nice, but you're gonna spend some money in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. clear your credit card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could tell somebody, like, what's a fun fact about you? What's something that uh, people may not know about you? I, I like I like flowers. Oh, okay. I like to plant flowers uh, at my house in South Carolina. Um, I have my flower bed, and, and every spring I just I get so excited. And, and my neighbors are like, "Oh, we can't wait to see what you're going to do this year, Mr. Wow. Morgan." <laughs> wow, that's nice. I like, yeah, I like to plant flowers, tulips. I love roses, uh, um, hydrangeas. Oh my God, I just go crazy. That so I like to crochet. Yeah, crochet. And uh, I make blankets, so I don't like making little things. I make scarves, some scarves and blankets. I like to make big things and real pretty. And um, and I like my, my kitten. She, she, oh, she, I know. I just saw your yeah, kitten. I, I, I like my, my kitty, kitty spirit. Yeah. Oh, you only have one one kitten? Yeah, I have a, we're going to get her another one. I decided uh, when we go back down south, we're going to get her another one. Because uh, she has a, a friend that comes and we have to feed her. But, you know, she's she's a alley cat. You're <laughs> stray, so I don't know. Yeah. When she sees spin all inside on coffee and stuff, she'd be like, <laughs> I was like, oh, are you gonna do that to my kitty kitty? No, 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 no. So we gotta get her a friend. So when we go back, we're gonna go to the uh, you know the animal shelter and, and get her a, a beautiful uh, companion. <laughs> She's oh, sorry. this person is just calling me, calling me one. But yeah. um, 
That's uh, I need a cat. I had a cat for so long. When oh. I started working in the DOE, a student gave me a kitten. I had him for nine her for 19 years. Oh, they're so beautiful. She died so a couple of years ago. Oh my god. And when I first got spirit, she was she was I could put her in the palm of my hand. Yeah, she was so little. And uh, you know, I just love her. Don't you just oh my god. Especially at night when they come up and cuddle and and and, 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 and take their little paws mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, I wanted a dog too, but sometimes your lifestyle can't take a dog. Unless I get a little one, I can carry me everywhere. But you know, I, I like animals. People think I don't because I don't have any animals right now. My coworker, oh. like, you don't have animals. You know, I love animals, but you know, yeah. the, the, a kitten is definitely. I could see a little kitten coming real, real soon. Oh, yeah. good. You know what? It's like we went on the trip this weekend, which was wonderful with black and gold. Oh, I love to black and gold. <laughs> black and gold into that. I love. See I have been working with them for years, but since the pandemic, you know, everybody has kind of not done the things that they used to. So it was good to see them pick that back up. And, and you know, it was like a little ski trip for the weekend. Ooh. And see people, them people party, girl. Oh my God, I haven't seen people party like that from sun up to sun down. When that music started, they started. And I just love seeing that. It, me and Christopher and Will Tracks, we were all talking about how wonderful the audience was. So thank you to Black and Gold. And then I got to meet you. Yes, 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 Black and Gold. You, I don't know if you were there. What I loved, the, the party, I loved breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it was a party. I loved that. It was I heard, I heard. See, I Sunday said, was a party. Sunday with praising God, girl. It was it was something else. I was wondering why my family said, okay, it's lunch, I'll see you later. I was like, well, bring me my food. He bring me my food, so I'm going back downstairs. And then I was like, why'd you go down there? He said, because it's a party. <laughs> Great, DJ. He said, "You just can't believe it. Come down to the I was so tired. I was like, I'm going to bed." <laughs> and when they play just song, I, they they play uh, "Do Me Baby" and "Full Crap." The whole place is singing <laughs> and going crazy. It was just, it was just crazy. I loved your performance. I, I mean, I loved when you came out in the audience and walked around. You, oh my God, it just. It just did. It's, I know it has to feel good. Like it's your people. They yeah. hit, right. Nobody is going crazy now. Pulling your hair. They not. Well, we'll fight if you pull this in. <laughs> fan or no fan, we fight. Come on, <laughs> <we're> too hard. <laughs> but see, we respect that. You understand? <laughs> we know that. Oh, if we want to pull pulling out here, we got. But it was just <laughs> nice. It was just. It was just it was nice. so nice. I just want to, and, I, and you know what? And I love the Adidas versus uh, Nike. Yeah. What was your? I was. I was Nike. I had Adidas. You was like, oh my god! See, I, I've got to do that. You know, I, I'm getting married, and, and you know, you got to give a part. I think I'm gonna do like a Adidas versus Nike versus Puma kind of thing. I love that people came in different things with that. It was so wonderful. You know what's yeah. nice too? A sneak up ball. Yeah. I, I hear that. Be good with that, yes, I hear that, yeah. So I haven't been to one yet and I've been invited, but I hear they're really, really nice. <laughs> I, I listen, I um, I know I'm probably gonna have to wrap this up. Um, you tell Mr. Sebastian, your fiance, he, I mean, he talked to me and my girlfriend, and it was just like. I don't know. It was like the spirit sent him there. Like we were just sitting talking about, and then all of a sudden he said, "Those cups are nice." And we, sh you know, we just started talking about the cups. But he was saying things like just dropping little jewels, like life. And yeah. we were sitting there talking about that. We looking at each other like <laughs> our conversation. Like we were just talking about people around you and your your energy. And yes, this is. It, it was just like he was God sent, and I knew when we saw you, and we went, we went inside just your, 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 um, what were you doing? A sound check? Yeah. And started singing with you. I was like, oh my God. This is so <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, he's a people's person. Yeah. You know and, and, and don't give him a beer and some Hennessy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. But he was on some real, like, it was just, it, he made yeah. us feel like, I was like, I'm really going to be, I'm, we're going to be able to meet. He's like, she, she going to love y'all. Yes, 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 yes. I was He's like, so cool. He's such a people's person. I mean, we could be standing somewhere and then people just start talking to him. It's like, wow. do you know them? He's like, no, they just start talking to me. Wow. It's so wonderful. Did y'all set a date yet? Um, You know what? Here's my thing, girl. This is what I tell people. I've 
finish it the house first. Yeah. I you know what I'm saying? Because I've seen so many people get married and then they build the house and it's so stressful and that and then all that stuff and then the money thing and all that comes in and then the next thing you know they're getting divorced. Yeah. So we've been together for about eight years. Wow. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was a little baby when I got it. <laughs> <laughs> He's too much to listen. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But, so we, we've been planning this, and, and he's like, you know, I just want to marry. I'm like, you don't understand. I've got to be in a place where we're settled. So we, we, we're not fighting and arguing about anything, you know, because I, I have a house down south, but. I, I want our house. You know what I'm saying? I want our house so he's comfortable, I'm comfortable. I want our stuff set. So then all we have to do is just live, work, and work when we want to. Yes. Enjoy our lives. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just be happy and comfortable. Yeah. You know, so, because I'm at my place now here in, um, in New York, in Queens, New York, because I have a condo here, you know? And it's just like, I want us to have our thing, because this is stuff that I got, you know, when I was. Mm -hmm. I want something that he like is he's the king of the cat. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I, get it. I love it. I love it. Miss Melissa, I'm gonna have to let you go because I don't want nothing. I want us to please, please. I need my cousin is in love with you. He's okay. like him and him and his friend, Sir Han. They when I told them that I was doing it, they went crazy. They went crazy. Oh, I gotta meet them. Shout out to Michael and Sir Han. Hi, Michael and Sarhan. I can't wait to meet you guys. Okay, so the next time I have a show in Queens or Brooklyn or Bronx or something like that, you are my guest, okay? You're my guest with B.B. Baker, and she's my cup. <laughs> oh, we, that's in the works already. What color did you say? You said, I know you said silver. Silver with red. Silver with red. I got it. Writing. So oh, I can't wait to see you guys. I love you. I love my fans. Thank you so much. This was so much. It's more fun than I thought, girl. Yes, Miss Melissa Morgan. Yes. I thank you for so. Thank you. I just thank you for taking the time. For You're you made our weekend. That's all we talked about. I was like, oh, we were singing. We should have recorded everything. Uh, is recordable but, but, and said, everything is not. And we 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 got the memory because it was it was dope. You know? We got the photos, though, girl. We got the photos. Yeah. We, oh, the photos are so nice. I'm getting ready to put some videos up now. But I just want to thank you so much thank for coming you. on. I hope to see you again in the future. I can't okay. wait to I hope I see you at the Grammys. What are you wearing? What color do you know? I don't know yet. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll, that's I'll. Sebastian. I got to go too. He's ringing the bell. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thank you, I love so you. much. Love I you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.